Good afternoon, everyone. With La Nina starting to drop temperature in the Pacific Ocean, we're starting to see anomalies like Arctic vortex in the first week of April, serious cold blasts putting out freeze damage warnings on the wheat crops, corn's forecast to be up to $7 by the fall, snow on top of the new buds damaging, any types of pollination coming up this year, look for a drive on blueberry prices, a drive on peach prices, frost damage on all the major crops as well as fruit and vegetable. Kansas doubling the old snow record. Wyoming doubling the old snow record. Colorado doubling the old snow record all in the first weeks of April. We're live up on Kickstarter. Please visit kickstarter.com. Type in My Path Journal, a 30-day life compass for dreamers. You can also visit our webpage at createmypath.me. Now let's take a look at how all the fruit prices and vegetable prices are going to rise over the next couple of months due to the extreme cold in April. As I had spoken about in my last couple of videos, coming out with a Kickstarter campaign, it's based on my own personal account of how to get myself more motivated along with being better organized. What a couple of us in an entrepreneur's group came up with was this 30-day goal journal. We're out live now on Kickstarter. You can just tag in My Path Journal, a 30-day life compass for dreamers, or visit our webpage at createmypath.me. Please consider passing this through your social media to get some traction on it as we just launched last night. Taking a look at La Nina, by September, October of this year, it's going to be down about 3 degrees Celsius in the Pacific Ocean water temperatures. This is going to usher in an extremely cold September, October, November in the Northern Hemisphere, and it will continue to get cooler from that point forward years into the future. Some of the anomalies you're going to start to see yearly from now on are these Arctic plunges in April, possibly May, as well as September, October. The snows will start earlier. This year is a perfect example, this incredible cold blast, which followed a relatively warm spring. So all the buds, all the flowers were out, the grasses were up, the shoots were coming out, and then extreme cold. And to give you an idea of what kind of storms accompanied this, Fort Collins in Colorado, the old snow record was 6.7 inches. The new record was 13.4 inches, literally doubling the old snow record. These are some snow totals in inches, 32 inches. That's over a meter of snow. If you're working in the metrics on that one, as you can see, it's those thick, heavy, wet flakes coming down on everything. Again, I'll give it up to Ryan for tweeting out these forecast maps coming down in the different millibar charts. So you can easily see where the cold air is plunging. You can see that deep tone coming down anywhere in that area. Crops have been damaged. Let's jump over into Kansas. The old snow record is 1.5 inches in 1920, but this year it doubled to 3.5 inches. You know, it's not just a little bit over, it's doubling the snow record. And even at 6 tenths of an inch back in 1926, but this is something ridiculous. These are the totals here from somebody's backyard. Pushing in Wichita Eagle also getting on the story here. They had to cover it regionally because everybody saw it regionally. But as in the national news, you won't actually hear so much about these snow records being doubled. Some more local snowfall report totals here for you. Now, Wyoming was not spared either. Look at the density and cold in this push down as well. Trailing behind that last low. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Pushing the snow record five inches above what it was in the late 90s. And if we're talking about just total moisture content, we need to go back to 1909, and that was 0.67 of an inch. And this new total is 1.15, which is nearly double the old record set over 100 years ago. Giving you an example here of the flowers peeking through the snow. Now, these are going to be damaged. Not only is it flowers but it's also all the buds that are on the fruit crops, the grain crops. This is what's taking a toll right now, this Arctic air pushing down. I'm jumping over to AgWeb, freeze damage on the winter wheat crop. Weather Trends 360 does a great job wrapping up how La Nina is going to affect corn prices. 
Look for $7 a bushel corn coming up within the next few months, which will raise all of the prices of everything else. There's a feedback loop into the feed for any types of animals, eggs. This whole thing is going to be taking place. So there will be a drive on all the food prices later on through this year and fruit as well. One of the reasons for the corn, it's possible that everything's going to be so wet because of these snowstorms and the rains that are coming that they'll have to replant. And this is a great image coming out of Kansas here. Now, what do you think is going to happen to those buds on the tree, the flowers that are coming out, covered in snow, frozen for days on end? Another example here on a farm. This is what's going to happen to those flowers that are out. You can see they're going to be shriveled, which will affect the pollination. A bit closer up view here. And since these cool temperatures are pushing all the way down into Georgia, we're going to start to see some effects on peach crops. These are normal, healthy peaches, but they were damaged in the springtime freezing. You'll notice how they're starting to rot on the one side. The others here have been damaged so heavily that it's split in the freezing, and then you'll have all these pits and divots in the peaches. And this is actually what it'll look like if there's any small peaches coming off currently as just, shall we say, tiny fruits. Those are damaged as well, frozen. They're not going to mature. Sunflowers are not spared either. Now, the blueberry crop was one thing I picked up a few news stories on. They're talking about how everything was already on the ground, started to bud, it's coming out, and then bam, all this cold is just starting to wreak havoc in the blueberry crop. They're talking about nearly total losses in some areas. If you're a fan of blueberries like I am, expect a doubling or tripling of blueberry prices. When I talk about frost damage, these are some images of exactly what's happening. And the ones that do survive are going to be repeating something that happened in the 1600s where the crops got blight and mold on them due to late snows onto the flowers that had already come out. This is a repeating pattern here. We're going to see the same thing. Our food's going to be affected. The daffodils here, that was that same photo from... Wyoming that you saw earlier. You can see those flowers are definitely having a difficult time in that cold weather. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Expect all of your food to start rising in price shortly, going through the end of the year, when it really takes hold, when your eggs are going to rise in price, any of the meats that you buy will rise in price, the grain crops you buy, and anything manufactured with any kind of the grains with wheat or corn are going to go up in price. So all of the food in the supermarket that you buy will go up in price, as well as all the fruits that are being damaged. And the rains and drought in California, the cold across the Midwest and Southern United States. I mean, wow. If this is just in the United States, what's happening, other places as well. Over in Asia, it's been extremely cold as well. This winter has lasted forever out here. It was cold in tropical areas just until last week. So the same thing that's happening up in China, their fruits been damaged. Grain crops have been damaged. This is part of what's going to happen is these food prices will start rising from right now. And next year, it's going to be cooler than this year.